So now we have a live connection in our local server to OpenAI Real-Time API. Hey, ChatGPT, I wanted to show them today how to use Real-Time API to make a better Siri. Does that sound good? Hey, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Leveraging a Real-Time API could really enhance Siri's capabilities. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and jump into that in today's video, where I'll walk you step by step from step zero to step done, how to build out a real-time API application so we can get this no latency type of conversation like we see here. Does that sound good, Chad GBT? Absolutely. Let's dive right into it. If you have zero to no coding experience, don't worry. I'm making this as easy as possible. We're going to be using Cursor AI here. We're going to use real-time API here. Let's go ahead and proceed. Some of y'all right now are like, Corbin, why did you just show advanced mode by Chad GBT? That is because that is what real-time API is. When leveraging real-time API here, we have the ability to either do audio to text, audio to audio, with little to no latency through API. This is extremely powerful. Therefore, I have three major goals for this video. First one, I'm gonna show you how to create a React-based front-end so we can just do start recording or start conversation with real-time API. The second one is I'm gonna show you how to create a server but that is run on your machine. So we don't have to deal with actually paying for a backend from Google or Amazon. Now, of course, everything I show you today can translate to using Google Cloud or Amazon in the context of running this kind of application. But I wanted to make this video as simple as possible so you can do it yourself. So that means the third thing, which is going to show you to the limit of what we can do locally on our machine, how to leverage real-time API. Sound good? Let's jump in. Let's go to get started here. This is gonna work with any IDE, Integrated Development Environment, Cursor AI, Replit, VS Code, whatever your secret sauce is, or whatever you like to do, proceed. The tutorial here is start from finish. So we're going to start at the very beginning. We need a project. We need to be able to create this new Siri. Click this right here. We're going to hit terminal. Let's begin. Now, one thing I got to point out before we continue creating this directory. If you're coming from the background of you've never coded before, you've never used React before, or you've never done this kind of development flow before, I encourage you to check out this video. I'm gonna put it in the description down below. It's Cursor AI's beginner's guide. It's around 30 minutes long. And the reason I encourage this, because one, you can watch the video in its entirety, learn more. But two, I have a Google Doc here that is very important. This Google Doc gives you everything you need to know with the errors you can run into. I give you a chat GBT chat in this doc that gives you very specific answers for everything you're about to see here. So to answer that question right off the bat, I'm getting an error with NPM commands. What's going on, Corbin? You didn't teach this. That's because you didn't install Node.js, which is all explained in this entire doc. Back to the video. The commands you're about to see can be found in that Google Doc as well, but we're going to do them here together. I'll make sure to try to put them in the description, but they can be found in that Google Doc. Actually, honestly, I'll link the Google Doc in the description down below. But here we go. So we're going to create a directory first as we're going to be storing all of our code. Let's go ahead and give it a name. This is how we're going to reference it. We'll say Siri better. Enter. So now we've created our repository. We can go and reference it. To reference it, we could use a CD command or alternatively, because this is the first time we're launching it, let's go into this open in folder. With this open in folder here, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and find it right here. Siri better, open. All right, perfect. So we are in here. This is completely blank here. I'm gonna make sure that I can open up my terminal commands here. So we'll open like this real quick. There we go. So open up a terminal window. So simply search on your computer terminal and this should pop up here. Alternatively, you can use it within the actual cursor AI platform itself or IDE, you can simply come down here, click this terminal. I like opening it up because you're going to have multiple terminal windows opened as you will see here. So open up terminal. Corbin, you talk too fast. This is too fast. Okay, go to the little settings. Instead of one, put me at 0.75. If that's still too fast, put me at 0.5. I get people telling me I'm too fast, I'm too slow. Pick one, y'all. <laughs> Real quickly, I'm going to have to rename the project as I realize some commands have issues when there's capitalization within the actual project name. Don't ask me why. I'm going to go Siri better. Better. All right. Open again. With this open, let's go to a terminal here and point it towards this directory. To do so, and as outlined in that Google Doc, we're going to do CD Siri better. Enter. Once we're in Siri better. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to stop saying that. Don't worry. We're going to go ahead and run a line here that's actually going to create a front end for us. It's going to install all the dependencies that are relevant in this context. It's going to be a React based front end. I'm going to hit this line here. And all I want you to think of when you hear React is no, we're not reacting to something. This isn't like top 10 reactions. Uh, this is going to be a, a web package we can use to build out mostly the website that you see when it comes to user interface. You go to YouTube, that's a front end. When you go to Instagram.com, if you go to the desktop version, that's a front end. That's the front end, right? So we're also going to be creating a back end in today's video as well. But this is going to be a local back end, e.g. we're going to be running the server in our machine so we don't have to deal with Google or Amazon when it comes to cost and to make this as simple as possible. To be even more clear on that, because of the fact of how the real-time API works, this is a WebSocket. 
This isn't a endpoint in the sense of how we've seen in the past where it's like reference the GBT 4.0 endpoint. You send it like a webhook data and then you get data back. Because this is a WebSocket, we need a constant server in order for the no latency to incur where we get the answers and responses fast. As said here, the real-time API is a WebSocket. That doesn't make sense. Put it in a chat, GBT chat. It'll make more sense. Maybe ChatGPT is a better teacher than me. So now that we created our React front end here in the sense of that we have the files and we can access them, source, app.js is where we're going to be putting all of our code when it comes to what we're about to showcase in today's video. Let's create a folder that is dedicated for the backend and a local server. To do so, first off, make sure that we're in the correct directory. So Siri better. And then on top of that, we're going to create another folder within this directory that is dedicated for the backend. So we're going to use these two commands. MKDIR again, we'll call it backend. And then we'll navigate to the backend. Enter. There we go. Backend created here. Let's proceed. Next, within the backend, we're going to do npm init-y. Enter. There we go. Furthermore, we're going to make sure we have everything that is relevant to what we're doing today with WebSockets installed as dependencies. npm install express ws.env. Enter. We're going to do a simple line here just to create the file of a .js. We could also right-click in the section there and create it. Or we can do touch.server.js. Perfect. Click it. Blank file. Next, we're gonna create an EMV file here so that we can secure sensitive information. This is gonna be specific for the open AI key we'll use in today's video. So again, we're gonna to do touch.emv. If you run into any issues, I've always encouraged you to use 01 mini or 01 preview or just a chat gpt 4 l chat or the chats that I provide personally that are specialized for this to help you out to learn more. Let's keep going. Purely the use case here is to provide very high sensitive information. An example of this is gonna be an API key from OpenAI. We'll go ahead and format it like OpenAI API key, which kind of makes sense. And then go ahead and just paste your API key here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once you do that, command save, make sure it's one line. You don't have to add quotation marks or anything, just one line. It should start with SK, proceed. Perfect. Let's go ahead and create another terminal window here because this one's gonna be dedicated towards our local backend. So I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times here. You'll see what I mean here. We're gonna actually run this pretty soon here. So I'm gonna create another terminal window here that's gonna be dedicated for our React front end. These two processes are separate. E.g., when you launch an application, the rendering of the front end and the application processes in the back end are two separate runs in the context of local development. As always, make sure you're in the directory. So for us, it's Siri better. And now we get to the code here, which I'll be honest with y'all is very lengthy because when it comes to real-time API, there is a just a ton, right? This is gonna be very complex for obvious reasons. It's not like we can just create Siri with a simple webhook. <laughs> This requires a little bit more complex logic here. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step what I did in the code that I'm about to show you right now. I'm gonna see if there's a way I can just share it with you as well, whether that's a Git or whether that's a Google Doc you can just kind of copy and paste over. For now though, let me show you the code. Let's begin. Right off the bat, if you're using Cursor AI, you already know what you can do. You can like Command A, Command L, learn about the code in the little chat, but I'll go and explain it as best as possible from my expertise, what's occurring here. Therefore, the idea here is that since it's a WebSocket, which e.g. means that it's a constant flow of information within a server, we have to make sure that there is something that is handling these operations. This isn't just a post or a git in the context of a webhook. We need to actually have a live server occurring here. Now, what's great about this server.js is that you can run this locally on your machine. You don't have to worry about Google or Amazon or any other server provider. So the first major thing you need to know here is the port we're identifying. This is important. Think of 4,000 as what we usually typically associate with functions or backend logic. This is specific to if you've ever run Firebase emulator, you'll know that's a 4,000 port as well. On top of that, the one that's probably more obvious and easier to understand is like the localhost 3000. That's typically the front end of a React app. Therefore, we need to make sure that localhost 3000, your front end, isn't like localhost 4000, 4000, like there can't be conflict there. So scrolling down here, let's come down to the open AI logic here. So right off the bat, you'll notice process.env.openai key. This is where we're referencing that env here. This is important in any development, not really important here. I mean, I guess it's kind of important so you don't see my API key, but this is just important in general when deploying applications, this protects you as the env typically isn't always pushed to your Git, isn't always pushed to full on production. This is how we reference high risk variables. Obviously, the whole point is to give us the ability to access this endpoint, which as you see here is GBT 4.0 real-time preview 2024-1001. I will notate that some accounts don't have access to this endpoint yet. Some accounts do. So if you run into errors, that may be your issue. Also, it's important that we identify another tag here, which is OpenAI beta real-time v1. I mean, this is early days, y'all. This is like extremely early days because we're getting the ability to create a Siri, which is kind of crazy. Therefore, the next thing that occurs here is that we are taking the messages coming in from the user, e.g. you, 
and we're converting it. And of course, we have a bunch of just air logic, right? I put these in here just so you can get help. If you run into errors, we get some type of message, error.message, like you get some type of idea of what's incurring here when you try to take this code past what I'm about to show you. That's kind of the server side. I could dive deeper into this, but I just wanted to show you how to get this up and running as fast as possible. So we're gonna jump over to app.js, which is your front end. Typically, when you start your front ends, you'll have most of your variables that you'll associate in later on code on the top of the fold, e.g. booleans, use states, use refs, et cetera. Now, just to give you a quick recap, is recording, set is recording. This kind of logic is in the context of like, I click the record button, set recording to true. I click it off, set recording to false, and then we can, you know, obviously cause the interactions on the actual app itself to change. Therefore, the second most important thing that you need to identify when accessing real-time API is your backend URL. So in this context, because I want to do it all local, it's going to be localhost 4000, as we referenced earlier here, ws-client. That ws-client comes from the WebSocket server here that we set here on this path. Then I give us some nice little console logs here saying we're connected to the assistant, et cetera. And this right here is the meat of response API which is the ability to select modalities, voice instructions. Now instructions are probably the most important in the context. These can get very, very lengthy. So this one's from OpenAI here, uh, such as your voice and personality should be warm and engaging with a lively and playful tone, et cetera. You can make the instructions more specific. Maybe you're Gordon Ramsay. You know, you're the best chef in the world. You know how to cook the perfect steak. I, I keep talking about steak in these videos. I don't know why. I am cooking a ribeye pretty soon here. That should be good. Put a little olive oil, let the pan get on 10, get, get it real hot. You let it sear in, put some butter. Okay steak. <laughs> um, and what's great is that within the code I provide, there's this bunch of error logic to help you out and you can copy and paste into ChatGPT if you run into issues. From this, we are able to get the conversation we need. Therefore, when setting up our front end logic here, it's going to be like a button, right? It's going to be like start recording, ask question. And obviously, in order to do that, we need to be able to get access to the user's mic, which we do in here. Next to the process audio logic here, we structure the file so that it can be interpreted correctly within the real-time API, which typically in this context is a base64 audio, which we then input into here. If we're coming all the way down here, we're going to have our button to be able to record, stop record, and proceed. Now, there is one thing that I couldn't get it to work for some reason, which is its ability to handle audio outputs. Let me explain. Let me first run this. So in order to run, obviously, we're going to do in our React front end NPM start. And then for the back end, in order to start that, we're going to make sure that we are in the correct directory, which is going to be back end, that is going to be found within Siri better. So you should just see something like this. And enter node.server.js. It's going to say the port it's listening to. And then typically, actually, we're going to have to start the back end first and then run the front end. So watch this. NPM start. And here we go. So now we have a live connection in our local server to OpenAI Real-Time API. If I come over here and I zoom in, we can actually talk to it. Now, when you first launch this, it's gonna ask, can I get access to your microphone, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously say yes. Now it's saying invalid JSON format set to server because we haven't sent anything yet. But watch this, this is pretty cool. Hello, what is the best way to cook a steak? Is it in the oven, on the grill, or pan seared? Go. So right now we have it set to where we'll have our audio file here. And then audio is sent to assistant for processing. And then we get our response right here. And I'm realizing we need to add some CSS. Okay. With a little CSS added, it looks a little bit better. We got a little box. Here's our message here. The best way to cook a steak really depends on your personal preference and the tools you're available. If you love a smoky flavor, grilling is fantastic for a beautiful. Here's the idea. It was able to interpret that audio and give us a text output. Just to prove it to you again, do you understand me? Yes or no, I'm trying to prove whether or not I am talking to real-time API. Stop recording, audio is sent, audio is processing. Yes, I understand you, how can I assist you further? If this wasn't connected, it would be like, hi, how can I help you? This code and everything I just showed you up to this point should get you in the right direction towards any application development you'd want in the context of real-time API. Now, I'll be honest with you, there is certain limitations to the local environment that I found personally, e.g., we're not hearing any audio. Let me know in the comments down below if anyone that looks at the code files and maybe finds a way around this because when I was kind of coding around, I just was having issues. I didn't know if it was a cores issue, a security issue, a browser issue, or I was just conversating with the documentation wrong. Regardless though, I know if I were to access this and maybe set up the server in a cloud run and then put maybe the data within a Firestore, something along the lines of using more of a actual backend, I think I could solve that situation. But at least in a local environment, I was running into that issue. Other than that though, make sure you leave a like, it's completely free. You learn how to use real-time API. You can download that code, use it yourself, check it out. You can now start talking to OpenAI on your mic and I'll see you in the next video. This tutorial was absolutely mind blowing. I feel like I've just hit the jackpot. The insights, the clarity. Okay, 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 okay. Those are two random videos. That's my face and I'll see you in the next video.